If you've ever wanted to build a cooler cart, you clicked on the right video. This is the second cooler cart I've made, and I made some mistakes on the first one, but I ironed them all out with this one, and uh, this is kind of a how-to series, and I can't answer every single question that there is, and I can't show you every detail about how to do this, but I mainly answered the questions that I couldn't find answers to when I was a beginner. So if you are a beginner, this is a good video for you. There are plenty of others where you can learn stuff, how to weld, how to bend tube, how to notch, how to measure, all that good stuff. This answers some of the questions that aren't in those videos. So uh, without further ado, let's get going. Okay, bearings are assembled. Time to move on to the next step. Okay, so the first step is I need to assemble all the wheels onto their hubs, which I have in here. Get them out for you. So let's see. These are the front hubs, and these are the rear hubs. Now these rear hubs go onto this shaft, just like that, and then these front hubs go onto go onto the spindles, just like that now you see the bearing in there that's what lets it spin in the uh in there so i'm gonna assemble all that i'm gonna put the wheels on all of this and then i'm gonna start uh shaping it up to the cooler Okay, so I just put the spindles and hubs together. Now these are the front wheels, so I'll show you how this works. So this thing right here is going to be welded to the frame, and then there's going to be a rod, here I'll set it over, there's gonna be a rod that comes and connects to this hole right here, and then it's going to turn like that, and that's how it turns. So you see how this isn't moving? Well, it's kind of moving because I can't hold it in place, but it's, yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. And um, see this little plastic spacer right here? So that makes sure that the tire here, you can see it a little better here. So this little plastic thing right here, that's a little spacer, that makes sure that the tire doesn't hit this thing because if this thing, if this little plastic thing wasn't here, then it would just, this thing would just hit the tire. So um, I'm going to need to put another spacer in here. You kind of see how there's like so much thread there. I'm gonna need a spacer so that I don't have to screw this thing in so much, so yeah. Okay, so these this is the rear axle. This is kind of a hard angle to get. Okay, so these tires are much closer together than they will be normally, but um, so the hubs are in here and they're holding the tires on and this is the sprocket. Now the, whoa. Knocked my impact off there. So the sprocket is connected to this shaft and this sprocket's connected to the engine. So when this turns, it's also going to turn the axle which turns the wheels. And that's how you get forward propulsion. Okay, so here's a little tip for when you're putting stuff on an axle, especially bearings like this. So these are very close to the size of the axle, which means that if there's even a little spot on the axle, it will not slip on. Now, please, please don't hammer them on because they won't go on. I know from experience, the last one was an absolute nightmare because I would just hammer it on and then I couldn't get it off and I would have to take it into a press and get it pressed off. Please don't hammer it on, sand, your, sand whatever axle you're using down and make everything go on smoothly. So like, see this little thing right here? Oh, that thing. I don't know what that is, but it's affecting the ability for this axle to go, for the bearing to go on. So, just gonna grind that down very lightly, and then it should go on the rest of the way. Okay, so just like that. See how I grinded a few spots down just a little bit, and just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit so you don't affect the axle. So yep, now the bearing slid on real nice, and I'll get the next bearing on, and then sprocket, and then wheel, and then we'll get it all mocked up to the cooler. Okay, so for instance, this uh, spro this no, this brake uh, rotor right here will not fit on the shaft. I'll show you. Okay, so see this brake rotor right here? It's, it's a one-inch bore, same as this. 
Um, but it'll go on the threads, but it won't go any further. It just stops right there. So the solution to that is not exactly a simple one, but it's really the only solution. Uh, put this in a lathe chuck and then kind of sand the inside of it a little bit, and that should smooth it down enough for you to be able to put it in. Um, also make sure your set screws aren't screwed in too far so that, oh my goodness, so that they're not like poking it or something like that. So luckily I'm a machinist and I can just take that into the shop and kind of sand it down a little bit. So, so this uh, slid on just fine because I sanded down the, the nubs that were affecting it. So now just put the axle in the hub and it slides right on. Perfect. That is, it's so nice when it does that. Yeah, um, I'm liking this ride height. So now I have to make sure that uh, these front wheels clear, like see where these need to sit so that they don't rub against here and I'll start doing all that. And then after that, I should be able to start mocking up the frame and then I'll show you the process for that. I use this one by one tube and I've got that long piece and then this shorter piece, which uh, probably isn't gonna get me much of anywhere. Okay, we don't have enough steel. Really not even close to enough. We only have enough for like the main two rails, but I need to go get a lot more, so. Okay, it has been a week. So what I need to do is figure out, number one, how far apart these two main frame rails need to be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld the bearing mounts onto the two main frame rails. And then I need to determine how far back these need to come to clear this sprocket and stuff. And then that's also going to be intertwined with the uh, front steering system and how far it needs to poke out. Okay, so this is the main frame. Obviously, it's not welded together. It's just kind of mocked up a little bit. So, here's the thing. This table is not level, so I need to level this main frame somehow. Now, here's the thing. This is, this main frame, you're gonna be building everything off of the squareness of this main frame. So this needs to be the squarest part on the, on the cooler. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Okay, so I got it all squared up and uh, I'll show you how to perfectly square it here. So, you're gonna take your measuring tape and you're going to go from one corner, so you're going to hook this tape on one corner and then go to this corner and if they're the same measurement, so this is 49 and 7 eighths, and if I do it right here, Sometimes it's a bit of a trick. So that one was 49 and 7 eighths. This should be the same. 49 and 7 eighths. That's how you know that this isn't like cockeyed or anything because then if it's like all catwalkless and everything, then you're gonna track down the roads weird and you're gonna catwalk down the road, or not catwalk. You're gonna crab walk down the road, which isn't what you want, obviously. So this is the most important piece to get square because you're gonna build everything else off of this. Now, of course, it's important to have everything else square, but you can't square anything else unless you have the main part of it square. Finish 
the welds. That one's a little goopy, but they are hot, hot welds, so they will definitely stick. So I flip it over. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good all around welds. So next up is the fun part. I get to put the cooler on top of the frame and then pick out where everything's gonna go. Like the uh, axle, not the axle, yeah, like the axle, the cooler itself, and the steering and everything. So now that we have our base, it's time to work on everything else. Okay, so now I'm going to see where these bearing hangers need to go. So you can see it better here. So these things hold all this like bearing assembly together and these get welded onto the frame. Now this has to be one of the best welds, maybe the best weld on the frame because this is going to be taking all the abuse of the axle and all the weight you're gonna put on it. So I'm going to, um, well this is, okay. Another one of the most important things to keep straight because if this thing gets turned either dirt like if it's sitting straight like this, but if it gets turned, then you're gonna be crab walking down the road and it's not gonna be good. So, um, what you do for that is you measure from this surface or that surface, what have you. I'll, I'll say, I put the tape measure against here and then measure all the way back to the front to right here. And those have to be exactly the same on both of these. So, if this is 40 inches, then this has to be 40 inches. No if, ands, or buts. Otherwise, your cooler won't track straight. <laughs> Alrighty, it is looking really, really good. So, now here's what we're gonna do. These back ax axle hangers, see those welds right there, I just tacked them on, those are going to be fully welded, like super hot, the best welds of my life, hot welded. And then I'm going to mount this rear axle, get everything set up, get the wheels the distance I want away from the cooler to make sure they don't rub. Uh, you want it to be close enough so that it looks right, but not far enough away so that it looks dumb, you know. Um, so do that, and then I'm going to make the mounting system for the cooler. After I mount the cooler, we're going to work on the steering. The reason that you need the cooler mounted before you work on the steering is so that you know how far out you need to weld these things on. But you get the tire too close, then when you turn, it's gonna rub against it, which is what, what happened to my cooler. Now the reason that happened was because I didn't have the wheels and tires before I mounted the cooler because I couldn't afford it. So that's why I recommend getting everything at the same time for that reason. So I'm gonna weld up the axle hangers, make the cooler mounting system, and then move on to the front, and then it's the engine and drivetrain, and we're done. All right, all right, all right. We got some beautiful welds on here. The outside ones aren't as good, but they're something. Just a beautiful. So that should hold. I don't see that going anywhere anytime soon. So now I'm gonna put the cooler on and then I'm gonna put two bars going from here to here, here to here, and then drill holes straight through the bottom of the cooler. And then I'm gonna put nuts on those bars so that I can just put some uh, bolts to screw down into there and then that should hold it and it should seal it as well. Um, so yeah, that's what's next. Okay, so I have cut out these bars. Now I'm going to weld them on like this, and I've also drilled them. So once I get these welded on, so there's gonna be one here and one here, then I will drill holes in the cooler and then bolt it down using these things. And I'm also going to weld these nuts onto the channel, just like, just like that so you can just screw it down onto it. So it's gonna be very convenient.
Alrighty, so I've got the cooler mounts done. So you can see that there's, it's kind of blurry, but I'll show you. So here are the bolts, and the bolts are going to go through the cooler and then into these. And then I can just put them all straight down right there. So that should work really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the cooler on top of the frame, and then I'm gonna put a marker up through the holes of the nuts and then I will drill the holes in the plastic and then cinch it down and then move on to the steering. Alrighty, I got all the holes drilled in the bottom and they line up like perfectly. Like I was afraid that they were going to drill into the insulation because coolers have really thick insulation. Obviously that's kind of the point of them, but uh, no, it fit perfectly. So I'm gonna flip it over, uh, ugga dugga it down. Well actually I need to fully weld the, well actually no, I'm gonna put the, bolts in just to make sure everything fits and then I'll fully weld it because cutting out a fully welded piece is a pain in the ass so heck yeah it's mounted the bolts fit perfectly so look right here you can see they're sticking out the bottom now that's a no-go because those will catch on the ground and will bring you to a screeching halt uh, I've experienced that with my last cooler so I'll cut those later but here's what it looks like on the inside one two three four and they just they fit just perfectly so now I'm gonna take them off and weld the whole thing up Alrighty, I got the braces or the brackets welded in. As you can see, the nuts are right in there. I'm sorry, this camera's so bad, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so they're all welded in, so now I'm going to bolt it on and then that'll be the end of the video. Okay, uh, I forgot to press record, but the uh, cooler is mounted now. Super solid. Uh, had a bit of a time getting it on there, but it, it's on now. Might be cross-threaded, but it's on. So as you can see, maybe you can't see. I'm trying to see. Okay, you can barely see. There's a little nub of a bolt right there. That's fine. Um, they fit a lot better than they did. And yeah, now they're on there. So um, you back up, get you a better view. Yeah, so that's going to end it for this video. The next video, I will start building the front section and then the engine, and then it's pretty much done. It's super simple. So uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. See you next time.